Welcome back to the next video in the series on Industrial Agile. Talking about manufacturing problems, product problems that are discovered only when full manufacturing, full production is running. I got such a problem in, in, in hands at the moment. In Colorado, in this COVID-19 pandemic, there's a group of volunteers doing excellent work to produce PPEs. And this is an example that I printed. I got quality problems. There are some issues on the, on the PPE that make it not good enough. It will be trashed, it cannot be worn by nurses out in the field who are trying to do their job and they urgently need it. How does Agile, an Agile approach to product development prevent such problems? I'll talk about that while talking about team composition, because that's where the solution sits, where the secret sits. The timeline of product development is to go from idea through product development with all the necessary work involved, uh, small batches, full production, classic cycle. Well, classic cycle, you might say, you're missing a few points. You worked where, where's QA, where is the, the, the ramp up of supply chain, the ramp up of manufacturing? The answer sits in the team composition. If you remember how Scrum works from one of the earlier videos, Scrum runs a sprint cycle, a couple of weeks to deliver a potentially shippable product increment is the official language. Potentially shippable implies that when the business, when product management decides this product can now go into manufacturing, that it can. So that means that QA people, as supply chain people, etc., they are all involved all the time. Now, it doesn't feel like the right thing. When you're still working on product ideation, why would you have supply chain people there? They're just going to be sitting idle. Yep, you got a good point. Let's now look at intensity. Let's look at what, what happens. In the early stages, product ideas, ideation, visioning, etc., there's a lot of, of, of intensity uh, with those product people. The product owner, with the peers, with specialists, with marketing analysis folks, etc., they are, are there, and yeah, that's where the bulk of the intensity, the bulk of the work will sit. There are already development people in the loop. Designers, in, in my case that's a bit overly simple, but in your case, the optical designers, the electronics designers, the software designers, there is a representation of those people. Also, supply chain people, they are represented, lower intensity, yet they are there. And manufacturing people, same story. They're not very active right now, but they are already visible. They are on, on the team. How would that work? Well, think back to Scrum and the sprint cycle, the Scrum cycle. In a sprint cycle, at the end, there is this, this review meeting. In the review, the delivered product increment, which at the ideation stage is, is maybe just a piece of cardboard, but that product gets inspected, gets looked at, and feedback gets collected. Maybe an hour-long meeting with developer people, with supply chain people, with manufacturing people. So there might be a, a first idea on the, on the table where Manufacturing says, that's really awkward to be printed in a 3D printer. You should make this smaller, that bigger, etc. There's early feedback. So the ideas already develop in the right direction. Time moves on, the product really is, is decided upon, it will be further developed, and maybe when entering that product development piece of work, maybe less involvement of the product people and definitely way more involvement of the product developers. Like I said earlier, that can be your optical designers, it will have your QA people in it, software designers. Uh, all, all the relevant skills are there and the intensity gets 
definitely a whole lot bigger. Supply chain, <clears throat> maybe it gets bigger, maybe not yet. Uh, still, they are there. They are there together with their manufacturing colleagues. And while the sprints are continuing with those review meetings, I've really been with a client where in one of the review meetings, the design was, was discussed, was inspected, and supply chain people looking at it saying, hey folks, if you go that way with the materials, there's a global shortage of that specific material that you're now using in your design. So we got about a year long wait time to get the, the, that material in. You're better off doing that difference. That, that early feedback from supply chain to product development prevented late waiting loops. If you truly have a handover, 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 and product development is ready, there's a minimum viable product ready, and supply chain looks at it and goes like, yeah, that's a great design and a great product. It's going to take a year to get that material in. Then, then you get no small amount of upheaval way late in the process. So do that early. Also, with my quality problem in, in, in my PPE, yes, it requires an experienced person, in my case, an experienced uh, 3D printing engineer, who knows that, hey, different brands of printers have different behaviors, and that can go hugely wrong. So he, she would have run early prototypes on multiple printers, multiple printer brands, while still in development. Again, early finding of problems by, in Scrum terminology, prioritizing your product backlog right. High risk issues, in this case, wall thickness on, on the prints, will get really high up on the priority list, and problems will discover, be discovered really, really early. Work continues, and like I already said, at some point that, that there is this minimum viable product. Hey, it's good enough. Product people say, let's, let's go into production, into manufacturing. Maybe small batches with soft stamps, etc. And yet we're going in production. The development cycle is, is, is reduced a lot. The, the, the intensity there is, is less and less and less. Supply chain might have ramped up by now to, to do their work. Uh, manufacturing, the moment that the reviews show a state of that product under development, where they say, we have enough information to start working on work instructions, on machine lineups, on test equipment, etc. They will have started to ramp up their intensity earlier, and now yeah, that intensity remains high. Small batches are running, and this would be the last moment, still too late to my liking, but this would be the last moment that in the small batches, that quality problem gets discovered. Again, too late for my liking. With an experienced 3D print engineer, you would have discovered it earlier by prioritizing your backlog right. Yet, we're still before a full rollout, a full production situation. There is still time to work between manufacturing, where a problem gets discovered, and design to redesign that product, in my case, to change the, the wall thickness. Through the small batches, the last issues have been ironed out, and now moving into full production, still got product people involved, the product owner is still there, might be thinking about the next version of the product. Development is there to resolve issues because outside temperatures go up and influence the, the printing quality. Supply chain is doing their regular work in whatever intensity is needed and manufacturing, yep, that's where the full intensity now sits. That's the thinking on how to prevent late surprises in industrial agile. Thank you very much.